Okay, anybody who has looked at this setup in the past, they, they know that it's really hard on, on batteries. Um, just to, to kind of go over the process again, all of my turbines come in through these outlets. Each connector here goes to my turbine. Everything comes from the outlets up there to my bridge rectifiers, a whole row of those. And then from the rectifiers, it comes over here to some power meters. These are what tell me what, uh, you know, what my peaks have been, how the turbines are running, things like that. And they let me see what, you know, my, my current battery level is, which we're going to talk about this problem here in just a moment. And then it goes from there to, I've got this crazy junction. Uh, one leg goes down to my collection of batteries and then the other leg goes over here to my collection of grid tie inverters. Now these grid tie inverters are generally meant for uh, solar panels and the way they they work though is on a, on a range. Uh, each one of these the range, voltage range, is 22 to 50 volts. Basically what that means is that once those inverters are on with them connected to the batteries, they will draw the batteries down to 22 volts. My batteries are arranged in a 36 volt configuration. So bringing a 36 volt battery setup down to 22 volts is not a good idea given I do use cheap batteries the entire purpose of my batteries is inexpensive voltage control uh, it just adds some drag to the turbines to keep them from spooling way out of control each one of my turbines is capable in a gust of exceeding that 50 volt cutoff <coughs> now if I run from my bridge rectifiers straight to these inverters if my wind is consistent if I've got a solid blow that's just holding one speed they work great what they don't do very well at though is if I get a really good gust that that spools up the turbines uh, these things they load them up and then it, it makes good power and it's it'll move it back you know up the system but what happens is whenever that gust dies away the inverters they unload and unload and unload trying to get the most out of the, out of what that turbine's making the entire time and they just they just keep taking resistance away which you know makes it easier for the turbines to spool <coughs> and then another gust comes up the turbines spool up much faster than these inverters can load them up and it just locks everything out. Once you get past that 50 volts, the inverter is completely shut off and the turbine's free will. So, the batteries prevent that from happening. They, they just, they, they keep it from, or they try to keep it from getting over that 50 volts. Sometimes, especially with the uh, I-1500 in the past, they would uh, still struggle every now and then and exceed that 50 volts. Now, like I said, I use cheap lawnmower batteries. I actually have two uh, old car batteries that just, they weren't starting a car anymore. But most of it is cheap lawnmower batteries. And for my purposes, they do what they're supposed to do. They just add some voltage control. <clears throat> I do not use batteries to store power. I want my power to go from the turbines to the inverters. Now, what happens though is uh, with these batteries, whenever they get so low, they don't recover properly and then it starts adding more drag and it takes more effort and time for the, the wind turbines to catch up. And then on top of it, that these three or four meters 
Each one of these things uses somewhere between 5 and 10 watts by itself. So they're all running all the time. It's always a load on the, on the batteries. I have uh, auxiliary power connectors for these. What I'm going to do is run these to a 12 volt power supply that's run off the grid. And that's just going to be, you know, powered that way. That way they're not drawing power off of my batteries. The next thing, we are revisiting this little gadget. Now, this thing was supposed to be a wind turbine controller. And it was supposed to work with 24 volts. The issue that I had was that it just kept loading the turbine up more and more and more and it was it was like the turbine had the brakes on the entire time. It did not work for that. However, the uh, the load switching down here, this worked properly. So what I'm going to do is I got this little solid state relay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run leads from the batteries to this connector. This is the battery connector for, for this uh, controller. And then I'm going to have the load terminals go into this relay and this relay is going to be controlling uh, two of my turbines. I have a 400 watt turbine that has really decent output and I've got a 700 watt turbine that also has really decent output. I'm going to put those two, they both work pretty well on a 24 volt circuit. I'm going to give them their own 24 volt batteries and we're going to you know, run this off of uh, this relay. This relay is going to control power going to one of the 1000 watt grid tie inverters. But we're going to see if that works. If it works, awesome. well basically if it doesn't work, whatever, I'm not out very much. If it does work, and then we're going to see if we can do the same thing with this. Now, I want to say this is a cheap charge controller, but it really wasn't. It was about 100 bucks, but it was the cheapest one that I could get that specifically said it could work with a 36 volt bank. So it's programmable, allegedly, in the same fashion to where I can set this thing up to turn on at 42 volts and then to shut off at 36 and a half, you know, something like that. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to use this relay because the relay is uh, 3 to 32 volts, but we'll figure it out. That's a little bit down the road. We'll see what happens. We're going to try it with this one first and see if we have any kind of decent results. The new arrangement, these are the two turbines that I have isolated. This is the 700 watt turbine. This is the 400 watt turbine. They go down to those rectifiers across the, these two meters. You can see that we're running at different voltages now. These are the East Debreeze turbines that are still connected together. These are the two 24 volt turbines now. They go down to that junction and then from that junction it goes to the batteries and then to this controller. Now, this controller, I have the load set up to this relay, and then this relay connects it to that inverter. Now, what this does, I thought it would let me fully program the inputs and outputs, but it actually doesn't. Uh, it's going to operate based on the uh, max and minimum voltages I have set up for this controller. And right now, my maximum voltage, what I have it set up as full, is 30 volts. Whenever it gets up to 30 volts, it's going to consider the battery bank full. Whenever it gets down to 24 volts, that's whenever it shuts everything off. It shuts that relay off. So, it does shut off at 24 volts. That's going to make my batteries last a little bit longer. I should probably set it up to 24.2 or 24.4, but we're going to stick with 24 even right now. Now, I don't know if that was on screen, but whenever that relay shut off, it shut off at 24 volts and then my voltage went right back up to 25 and some change. 
what this thing does is whenever it hits low voltage and shuts it off, it has a timer and it leaves it completely disconnected for 60 seconds before it will open that circuit back up and turn my inverter back on. So I've been watching it for just a little while, see like it just now turned back on. We're running at 30 volts now. It's gonna let my inverter, which uh, it's hard for me to get everything in one shot. Right now my inverter is only kicking out 100 watts. It's really not blowing very hard outside right now. But it's gonna run down to 24. And after it hits, well, <laughs> right as soon as I hit it. Uh, after it hits 24 volts, it shuts off. And it seems like that's going to do exactly what I need it to do. So we're gonna watch this for a little while and I will update after a few weeks with how well it runs. And if it runs well, I'm going to come back and run my two bigger turbines the same way through that other controller and we'll see how that does all right thanks for watching guys subscribe if you haven't if you like this kind of stuff helps me out you'll get notifications of new videos and new projects as i start them you guys stay safe have a wonderful day